Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to use the Rhino 7 Subti tool to make this really cute cat ring to wrap around a finger. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start it, if you are not familiar with the Rhino 7 uh, Subti, I do have a lot of video on the playlist. I will put it on the right top corner. Um, and also I have a course for it. If you're interested, you are welcome to check it out. That's starting from the scratch. When we are making a ring, we always want to start at the front view and decide what ring size you wanted to do. In this case, I'm having a 16 meter diameter and for my ring. We want to design when it is flat, it's much easier instead of working on this ring. So I need to know how long is this one. So I'm going to use the command for length and it tell me it's like 50.265 millimeter. So I'm going to copy that and making a straight line from here and it is the same length by passing in there and holding my shift and click on it and then that will be the line this line is represented this curve with the same length okay once we get that we are going to do our design right here so that's coming into all four view and in fact maybe turning this way will be much easier for me to look at it as a cat. So that's coming into the top view. We're going to come into the subti tool. Under the Rhino 7 that you have, uh, the subti tool is listing right here, or you can turn on the icon, which there will be something like this. We simply want to go into bring up a square or a cube and we can draw it anywhere for any size we can size it later but we pretty much want to get something close to a square right there okay once you have it under the sub d that you do have the selection for all the selection there and then for each of the selection once you click on it you will get this toolbox right here all right so i want to click on the sub d object and i want to click on the sub d object and in this case i want to pick up the point of vertex. What that means is whenever I picking up this, I will pick up the sub D object and then I can modify those points if I wanted to have. So let's say I want to make this rounder, I want to make the middle part bigger or something like that. Now in this one, this still look really square-ish. So if you continue to edit, making those two a little bit coming down, you can see that it become more rounded from my top. At the same time, you can also edit on the side as well. For example, here and here, I'm going to pick up those points and then I'm going to scale it down in the middle or one on one D scale it up. So this is more like a ball instead of the square right now. So first things that we wanted to do, oh, also maybe here and here, I want to also in this view, 1D scale it down. In this one, I want to make it puffier, 1D scale it up. So we get something like this. All right, so on my top view, if you look at my sub D, I'm going to turn it into the ghost view. You're going to see that I need to have an ear coming out from here, but I don't have enough faces to do it. So I'm going to increasing the face by insert a sub D loop. All right, so we're going to pick up this loop right here. If you look at the perspective, you're going to see that it's picking all the way, both top and the bottom one. Okay, let's hit enter. And I want to insert something about right here. The same thing I want to do on the other side. I'm going to insert sub the loop one more time and insert about right here. Now you can see we got an extra surface right there. So let's go ahead to pick up the faces and we are not able to pick up because our selection right here didn't select the surface. So I'm going to select this surface. I'm going to pick up both the surface right here, top and the bottom, holding my shift key, top and the bottom right here. And I want to using the gumball to extrude. So we want to move in the dot so you're getting the extra right there. Okay, so now you can see I got an extra right there. They may not be exactly the same because I didn't use the symmetry, which is fine. I would like to have my cat is more organic looking instead of um, really geometric. So I'm going to moving those two in to make the cat ear a little bit fatter. All right, so that's the cat. Now on my side view, you are looking at it might be like too long for my cat ear. So I'm going to pick up 
them one more time and one D scale it down. So it's coming into the point. Then I have that. All right. So this cat face look a bit longer that we can adjust later. That's fine. Let's go ahead to do the body. And I'm looking at this. Maybe my cat head is a bit too fat. So I'm just going to 3D scale it down, making like a approximately this size. All right. And then we can keep adjusting if we need to. I would like to align with the line that I have. So I'm going to pick up my object and I want to use the align vertical center. I want to align with this line right there. So there will be the, right there. Okay. Then that's starting working with the body. For the body, we need to have another piece coming out. I personally like to have them connected. So I'm going to pick up the faces. So again, we want to pick up the sub D and we want to make sure the face is check. Let's go ahead to pick up one, two, three, and four right there. And then we want to extrude it down one time, twice. So this is the neck area. It will pull your object a bit longer, but that's fine. And then we want to move it one, two, and three. So this will be the body. Now the body look a little bit too long. That's fine. We can adjust that as well. So let's pick up all this section right in the middle and let's go ahead to make it wider. Something like this and make it wider. Something like this. All right. So now we have this body and, and again, this look really long, but it's okay. We can adjust it. Now this neck area need them to be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to 3D scale something like this and started moving those part up a little bit. So it will become something like this and then something like this. And then you can make them a bit wider if you want to. So then that will be the cat body. Now, if this neck area is a little bit too thin, you can always adjust it. We can also use the curve instead of picking up the face. I can pick up the curve and I can make them a bit fatter, something like this. So it's, this is going to be the fun time for you to play with it and see what will fit it better. All right. And I'm also going to move this one down. Okay. Now we have the cat body. We need to adjust it. The cat, um, suppose the balance should be rounded. So I'm going to pick up all these faces or the curve and I want to round it. I'm also going to pick up the butt right here. So the butt right here should be coming out a little bit and maybe you can tilt it the angle. So make it more like a rounded butt right there. Okay. And again, you can adjust it later. Like for example, if you feel like this is like too long and then you can adjust it from there. All right. So now we have this body, we need to have a hand. So coming into my perspective, you, we're going to pick up these faces and these faces simply just going to extrude it with the gumbo coming out once, coming out twice, coming out three times. All right. So then I have a hand right there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, pick up these faces and these faces, extrude it once, extrude it twice, extrude it three times. So then I have a cat lying down there. Now I wanted to, this arm to be coming into the faces instead of just like that body right there. So I'm going to pick up all of them. And in this case, I actually want to pick up the point or the vertex only, and then I'm going to move it up, turning around, moving to the face and only pick up here, turning around, moving to the faces and you can play with it. I see what's going to work for you. Now, again, this hand might be like too fat at this point. So we are going to 2D scale it down. So they coming into the point, scale it down like this. So then I have this right here. If you feel like this is too far away from your body, I'm going to pick up those points and those points and just simply moving in. And this is about time to tweak it into the way that you like it and keep turning, moving around until you find the posture that you like. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but instead of uh, doing one by one, which you could do it, another way to make it symmetrical, if you like to, you can use this uh, reflect 
on the sub D object and we're gonna pick up this sub D and it will choose like which axis that we wanted to use. I'm simply going to draw an axis right here and flick the direction and enter. So now I have two the same, which means if I edit this one right here by moving it up, something like this, both hands were moving up and down at the same time. All right. Uh, and then so we can doing anything if I want to move this ear right here by moving this ear, the other side will move as well. Okay, so up to you if you would like to use this function or you like to uh, edit one by one. Now this is gonna be a ring, so we are not gonna creating the fee for it. If you want to, you can use the same way like you do with the hand. All right, so once you got this one, we need to make tail and I do not want the tail to be like so symmetrical. So I wanna cancel this um, reflect. So what you do wanna come into the reflect icon and right click on the reflect icon. So, and then you click on this body, you can see it's no longer two different tones of the gray, which means this is no longer on um, the reflect. So if you pick up any of these faces, uh, for example, you, and then you wanna pick up the point and when you're moving this one up and down, the other side won't change. Okay, now that's dealing with the tail. Let's go ahead to pick up the faces and we wanna pick up one, two, three, and four, and then we wanted to continue to extrude it. If I extrude it, you're going to see it is the same width for the other one. So I actually need to make this one a bit smaller. So instead of just extrude it, we're gonna do again, one, two, three, and four. Instead of just extrude it, so you're gonna coming over here, it's, uh, the one on the top is insert sub D, and we wanna insert sub D. Uh, we wanna make sure it is, uh, the mold is as a group. Right, so then you hit enter and then you want to pick up like what distance you're going to insert and then you are going to see is you got this extra faces inside of the uh, the one that we pick and then you can scale it down. So now you're dealing this faces instead of the whole body and then we want to continue to extrude it and then you can extrude it multiple times, one, two, three, and four. All right. At the end, this is going to, I mean, do a lot. You're going to do a lot more tweaking. For example, this butt, it seems a bit, uh, how do I say that? It's a, a bit pointed as it's not cute enough. So you might want to modify, make sure it is not coming out like this way. And also um, maybe on the tail right here, I'm going to pick up all the faces on the tail like right at here. And I want them to be a bit fatter coming out like this. All right, uh, a big look like a fox right now, but it's okay, you, go, you get what I mean here. Now, since this is going to be a ring, and so what we like to do is actually wanted to, I wanna move it, all of them close to the body right here because this is where the ring, uh, it's going to attach where the ring shank is. So I wanna make them as close as possible to the ring shank, that way the ring size will be more accurate. So it will be something like this. And of course you can keep editing it if you would like to, but I'm going to about stop it right here and then to show you the rest. Okay, so let's take a look how we are going to have this shape to the ring. Now. This is where the reference line right here, I'm going to disable everything and pick up this one. This line should be aligned with our ring. Our ring should be a little bit lower and that's going to be um, referral to this line. So that's using the command, coming into the transform and then you have the flow and you wanna flow along curve, all right? Pick up the object that you wanna flow and you want to pick up, you want to copy equal yes, rigid equal no. You want to click one of the end here and anywhere on the body. As you can see, it is inside of it, right? And that's because the direction of the curve, we don't know and we just pick whatever. Let's take a look on this one. This curve, if we want to analyze the direction, you're going to see it's going into this way. 
All right. And you also, let me delete this one. You also wanted to know where is the seam. So you coming over and then uh, to the curve tool. Then there's a one for you to find where the seam here. So adjust the closed curve seam, right? Now the seam is right here. I'm going to move the seam up to here. And this is where the direction is going to be. All right, so let's do the flow one more time. You can just type it flow. And then I want to pick up this one. I'm going to pick up the object and going to pick up the base curve. And this time I want to click on the right side of the seam. As you can see now, it has become like this. And it is a, a bit stretching right there. You can adjust this uh, if you want to by uh, recorder history. And then you can make this cat a little bit shorter. So you can have the gap bigger if that were for you. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to use the flow one more time and pick up this end and record a history and pick up this end. All right, as you can see, my cat is a bit stretchy. And then, so I'm going to pick up my cat and just do one D scale it down, something like this. So it's not that stretchy. And then you can continue to edit. For example, I still want to pick up my sub D and then I still want to pick up some point. And let's say this is like way too fat. I'm going to move it down something like this. As you can see, the target will move as well. And maybe I want to tilt it a little bit. And so the target will move as well. Okay, so you can edit when it is flat or you can edit when it is here. Okay, and I will leave that to you because this seems to uh, do some tweaking, editing, especially the head is right there. I want a head to look up. So I'm going to come into the head, pick up all of this right here. And then on my other view, I'm going to make the head coming, looking up, something like this, and kind of pull it up a little bit, something like this. Maybe that's too much and moving inside, coming out, something like this. And then you can keep editing until you find the way that you like it. Once you like this one, you can pick it up. If it's gonna look better for the rendering, you can use the rotating tool, snapping into the zero of that ring shank and then continue to edit like this. You can also edit, um, since it is still in the sub D, I'm going to pick up the sub D point and point only. And I want to pick up all of this head right there. You can edit right there as well. You just need to, because it's coming into the circle, you may pick up certain point that you don't want it to edit. And then you just need to deselect all of this. And then we can come in here and say, instead of uh, moving the head there, I might want to rotated the head right here, bring up right here and moving around things like that. All right. So that's how you can working with the sub D. And again, this is not done. This has not more to tweak, but I don't want you to watch me tweaking it. I want you to do it on your own, but giving you the idea how you are getting this form. I hope you enjoy the video. A lot more sub D video It's on my channel, or you can check out my course that show you step by step for how to using the subtly tool to get organic form. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.